Bold by Lucas Volker. That's the cookbook that we're reviewing today, so grab a mug of your favorite beverage and join me for today's nutrition coffee chat. Hmm. And while you're at it, click the subscription button below and the little notification bell so that you get everything you need to create healthy eating habits that stick. Ah, well, if you're like me, you eat a lot of bowls. <laughs> I certainly do, whether they're kind of soupy, uh, stew type of bowls in the winter or more of a full meal salad bowls in the summer. I eat a lot of bowls and I often get a lot of requests for bowl recipes or how to build good bowls from clients, from you here in the YouTube community. And so when I was browsing my local uh, bookstore and spotted this cookbook, oh, it drew me right in, as well as ah, that beautiful image on the front cover. Um, and then when I looked further, it said vegetarian recipes for ramen, pho, bibimbap, dumplings and other one dish meals and so plant-based meal recipes and cookbook ideas are also what i'm often asked for from you and so when this was vegetarian and bowls oh <laughs> sealed the deal i knew i was grabbing this one and so i've done a thorough cooking through all these bowls and i have my review here for you today uh, but before I get into these bowls, do you make bowls? If so, what are some of your favorite combinations? Share your um, ideas in the comment box below. Okay, so let's get into Lucas Folger's bowls. Um, this cookbook, you always want to know how is it, uh, either photos, how does it look? And so this cookbook, it has a mix. There are photos in here and the photos are beautiful but not every single recipe has photos. Um, it is quite a nice kind of convenient compact size, lays quite nice and flat um, in a cookbook stand. Um, and then yes, when there are photos, they're really quite beautiful, but not every page has a photo on it. And it's organized, well, of course it's all bowls, so <laughs> no surprises there. And the table of contents, uh, introduction, tools and ingredients, ramen and other wheat noodle bowls, pho, bibimbap and other rice noodle and rice bowls, grain bowls, dumpling bowls, basics and components. And uh, yeah, so I did a, a thorough cooking through of different bowls, trying to capture bowls from the different categories. Although I admit, I didn't make any dumplings. <laughs> That was just a little bit too much work for me. But I did make a number of the recipes, and a number of the recipes are what I call compound recipes. And so you often need to make a component first that you're gonna then use as an ingredient in that recipe. So for example, you're going to make some of the broths, some of the pickled vegetables that you're gonna use in your bowl. Um, I did not make any of my own noodles, although if you are keen to do that, there's instructions in here for that, but I did buy store-bought noodles. So let's jump in to see what I did try. Ginger miso ramen was the first one. This one doesn't have a, oh, no, this one does, I'm sorry. After the recipe, this one had a photo. And this one um, was quite similar to many of the recipes that I found in here. Um, it was says that it serves four, but when I was looking at the recipes, when you look at the amount of vegetables, when you look at the amount of the protein containing ingredients, it really was more for, for two people. Um, and so that is how I cooked all of these recipes. I cooked them all for two using the full amount of the protein and the vegetable components and sometimes decreasing the, the noodle or the rice, the kind of starchy component to the bowl, just because otherwise it seemed quite unbalanced here. And um, quite frankly, if you are going to be making it for four, it would be quite a small little serving. So I don't know that it would be enough for four adults and it certainly is not the amount of protein or the amount of vegetables that I recommend having in a meal. So I did adjust all the recipes in that way. Um, and this one didn't actually have any protein components. So I did um, add some eggs to our dishes here, but it was tasty. Yeah, simple and kind of an interesting way to do squash. I wouldn't have thought of squash in a uh, um, in with noodles, but it was quite tasty. 
And this one, you make your own dashi. So the, I did make the vegetarian dashi for this one. Um, mushroom soba noodles, this recipe does not have a photo for you, but it was quite tasty. Um, and uh, this one, yeah, I quite liked um, the kind of combinations of flavors and it has soft tofu in there. And many times when I'm uh, working with clients, people have maybe ventured into tofu or familiar with the firmer tofu, but don't really know what to do with a soft tofu. So I quite like that um, in this recipe here. Uh, the next one, vegetarian curry laksa. This was delicious. I love a curry bowl with uh, green beans and a uh, hard boiled egg. Yeah, quite, quite a good combination there. And something I was noticing in each of these bowls as I was making them is that they are quite complicated recipes. I mean, it looks a little bit um, deceiving because it doesn't look like there's that many steps um, to it. But then when you read each step, there's actually a lot of steps within each little paragraph there. So there are a lot more steps than it looks. And that wasn't just for this recipe, that was for pretty much every single recipe. There were a lot of steps involved and quite a lot of dishes because for most of them, you're creating many of the components separately and then you're combining them in the bowl with the last step. So a lot of dishes <laughs> to wash after each of these recipes. And I would say on average, um, the recipes usually took me about an hour to make, um, and that is without making my own noodles or my own hot sauce, um, that sort of thing. Okay, but moving on, uh, very simple pho. Um, this, again, didn't have a recipe, but beautiful, beautiful uh, dish. We love that, and yeah, that pho, I've never, or pho, sorry, I know that I don't pronounce it very well. Um, the pho broth was delicious and it does make quite a big amount of it and so it does take some time but I found that to be very worthwhile and this is probably the recipe that I will keep coming back to again and again and probably doing different riffs on it but using that pho, uh, stock to be yeah it was so good <laughs> that house smelled delicious the whole day it's so aromatic um, yeah, beautiful, beautiful dish. Uh, moving on, basic uh, bibimbap was really good. Again, not, not a lot of photo uh, recipes that I chose, but uh, love being able to um, yeah, have uh, reuse brown rice and make it all crispy. So, so yummy. Um, and the leafy greens in there. Oftentimes people are kind of stuck in a rut with what you do with leafy greens. So that was delicious. Um, roasted vegetable bibimbap, this one here. Um, finally, <laughs> one with a photo. Uh, great combination of flavors and not necessarily flavors that I would have put together, but so, so good. I love that kind of crunchy uh, rice. Oh, so yummy. Um, savory oatmeal bowl. And again, this one doesn't have a recipe, but I love that idea of using a steel cut oat instead of a rice. Uh, such great fiber in there and just nice to have some variety. Um, sometimes we can get stuck in a rut and do a lot of rice. Uh, we're a big rice eating household. My uh, partner is from a culture where it's kind of not a meal if there isn't rice there. Um, and so it was really great to do the, the oatmeal. And he was like, is this rice? And I was like, oh no, it's oatmeal. And, and he loved it. And um, yeah, I love the flavor combination happening here too. So kind of cool to not just think of oatmeal for breakfast, but to use it in a different way. Veggie burger bowl. Um, this one, nope, again, no photo. <laughs> But this one was exactly up my flavor profile. I loved it. It's chickpeas, it's lemony, it's uh, cherry tomatoes, avocado, some great quick pickles in there, both pickled red onions and pick quick, quick cucumber pickles, both of which are delicious. And I will definitely be repeating those recipes. Um, and so, yeah, if you like kind of a, a Mediterranean style kind of uh, tabbouleh-ish type of flavor profile, this is a recipe for you. So we kind of moved out of Asian flavor profiles into more of a Mediterranean one. Uh, next recipe, rutabaga fried rice. 
I thought that was interesting. Rutabaga is a vegetable that doesn't get a lot of love. I find it's an unsung hero um, and is often quite inexpensive, especially in this time of food costs rising. can be handy to look for those in the winter particularly. And so yeah, loved um, this recipe using a, a vegetable that many people don't know. And um, toasted bulgur bowl again. Ugh. You know, not a lot of photos for you here, um, but this was quite a good one again, using more of Mediterranean flavor profile with chickpeas and cherry tomatoes and tahini and um, cucumbers and parsley and Swiss chard. So yeah, lots of kind of Mediterranean flavors involved there. And again, bulgur, a grain that many people don't know about, don't know what to do with. And so it's great to get some different variety in here. Um, black rice burrito bowl. This one has a photo that I think is absolutely stunning. And quite frankly, I made this recipe purely because the photo was so good. Ah, oh, stunning, stunning photo. And then thankfully, yes, the flavors were delicious altogether. Um, and the mangoes weren't very good uh, in the grocery stores near me at the time I was making this. And so I actually just reheated some some frozen uh, mango and it was delicious, totally worked. And I love recipes where you can do that. So yeah, this one I will be making again, this I found delicious. You need to be a cilantro lover. <laughs> it contributes a lot to this recipe, but yeah, if you like kind of cilantro and mango and like all those fresh, refreshing uh, flavors, this is a good recipe for you. There's lime in there. Oh yeah, so delicious. Uh, next one I tried was a buckwheat bowl. Again, no photo here, but nice to try different grains, some variety happening. And uh, yeah, those were all the bowls. So I mentioned I made a vegetarian dashi. I made the vegetarian pho broth. And as I've already raved about that, we'll definitely be making that again. Um, and then made the pickled red onions, made the quick cucumber pickles. Both of those were really tasty and quite easy. So I will definitely be repeating those recipes. Um, and then frizzled shallots as well. So again, that was one of those ingredients in another bowl that added kind of a crunchy uh, flavor to it and that, that onion brightness to the, to the bowl. So those were all the bowls that I tried. Uh, and as far as a recommendation, you know, for this book, is it Kristen approved or not? I have to say in all the years that I've been doing cookbook reviews, I haven't been more conflicted about whether to recommend this cookbook. Um, I thinking and thinking about it, what I've landed on is that yes, I recommend this cookbook, but for a very specific cook. <laughs> So who is this cookbook not for? This cookbook is not for you if you're cooking for a bigger crowd. If you're cooking for four, five, that type of number of people, do not get this cookbook. It says it serves four, definitely serves way less than four people. Don't get this cookbook if you're looking for quick weeknight 30 minute meals. No, nope. every recipe here took over an hour to make. Uh, but I would say this is a good cookbook if you are already plant-based or you're looking to become more plant-based. Um, now let me back up and just say most of the recipes aren't vegan um, and they don't provide specific vegan substitutions, but they could be easily be done. Um, so I would say, yeah, plant-based, either you already are or you're looking to become more plant-based and you are willing and you enjoy putting in the time to discover new food and to be spending that time in the kitchen. So if you have some leisurely time in the kitchen, looking for new plant-based ideas, this cookbook is for you, particularly if you love things like bibimbap and pho and that when you're going out to restaurants and you're looking out to have recipes of how to make them yourself. Um, this would be a good intro cookbook to those cultural foods. Um, is it purely those cultural foods? No. But if you aren't from those cultures and you're curious about those flavors, particularly plant-based versions of them, this might be an interesting kind of tiptoe into that world. So if, if that is you, it's a worthwhile cookbook. If that's not you, I would give this one a pass. And so if that is you, please pop on down to your local uh, bookstore and get it there. 
If you do happen to get your cookbooks from Amazon, I'll ask that you use the link in the description box below there to purchase your book, because when you do, uh, a little bit comes back to me at no extra expense to you. So that's a wonderful way to support the channel here. If you like today's video, let me know. Click the little thumbs up button below. I've got a couple other cookbook reviews pulled up here that you might enjoy. Uh, have a wonderful month and in the meantime, enjoy healthy eating.